just have one voice unto you, God. God, show and work your praise, God. Even through the babes, God. Because you said out of the mouth of babes comes perfected praise, God. So the Holy Spirit, we ask that you would just do what you do. God, we can't move without you. We can't no. talk without you. We can't walk without you, God. We are totally dependent on you, God. So God, we just thank you, Father God, because you're, you're the person that we're coming to see, God. You're the one that we need to fix our gaze upon, Father God. Lord, you told us to come and we're here, God. And so, Lord, we enter into your gates, Father God, into your gates of thanksgiving, into your courts with praise, Father God. And we lift you up, God, because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God. God, you are our beginning and our end, God, the Alpha and the Omega, the one creator, the one true and living God. And we thank you for the resurrection. We thank you for the cross, God. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, God. We thank you for making all things.
because the world is training up people. They're training up young people. Yeah. And, and they're training them by music videos, Illuminati stuff, conspiracy theories, right? Jesus was multidimensional. Yeah. He was talking about it long before anybody else was. So guess what? There is a heaven and there is a hell. Yes, there is. And there's a, a battle that's going on. Yeah. And you belong to the Lord. You belong to God. And he has a seal upon you. He has a seal upon you. That guess what? When you go in the next 10, 20 years, you're going to be armed with the word of God. And you're going to stand in righteousness. Because guess what? A lot of people aren't going to stand, but you guys are going to have what it takes to stand. Yeah. Yes. Because guess what? This world has an expiration date. And it's expiring fast. Okay? So, gather every time you come before the great king, always expect that he's going to reveal treasures in heaven. He's going to reveal his thoughts. He's going to reveal. So, as Pastor Christie comes, she's coming as a she's coming as a Levite. You know what a Levite is? That's somebody who's entrusted with worship. worship. That's somebody who's entrusted by God. Sees that yeah. in you. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just praying for it out loud because I 
literally am just thinking about what I just saw. It's so awesome. Yes, but I want you guys to be encouraged. Yes. Especially our men. Yes. Um, you know, and you too. Strengthen for showing people, up Lord. and being here. Strengthen your people, Lord. God, God is oh. very pleased you. Because it would be easy just to stay home and do your thing. Yes.
practice killing our flesh through worship. So this is something, it's, it's like the mom telling the kid to clean their room. You don't want to do it. But the Lord is saying, when you go home, this is what I need you to do every day. Yes. You're getting the assignment, the practical application, but you've got to kill your flesh so that when it's time for worship, hey! yeah. when it's time for worship, God can pour out. See, God's not going to pour out in our flesh. Oh, now our flesh can wake up. Look, look, he did it. Oh, wait, I think I'm feeling something now. Hey, no, 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 no. We've got to come. He's already walked out on the water. He needs us to come the rest of the way. And the way we do that is we kill our flesh through worship. Through worship. You tell your tongue what to do. You tell your mind what to think. I'm going to think on the goodness of the Lord. I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. But I want to think and focus on my sin and my illness and my issues. I'm going to slay my flesh. And I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. No matter how. Yeah. Get yeah. over yourself. Yes. Get over how you feel. It don't matter, baby. Get over it. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Hey. And I cannot present this in my own strength because I don't like telling people what to do. So I know it's the, the spirit of the Lord upon this, this word right now. But for you to be able to rise up in this next season, in your home, you have got to practice of the worship. Yeah. Worship yeah. simply means Strengthen taking from your app yeah. and putting God on top of yeah. 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 it. Because we have our problems on top. Because mm -hmm. that's what we all hear. You know it's on top because that's what everybody hears about. Right. Whatever's on top is what's going to flood out first. Y'all hear me? So we have got to train ourselves in worship. You got to get on your flesh nerves just like you got on your nerves today. You got to train it, train it, train it up in the way it should go. In the name of Jesus, you train it so that what rests on top is the spirit of God, the spirit of his word. So that's the first thing the world says. We've got to retrain ourselves. Y'all hear this? We've got to church, we've got to We've got to, there's a kingdom assignment. There is a kingdom assignment here. And this is bigger than just Christy standing up here forcing you to say, Jesus, Jesus. This is a kingdom assignment on your life. Yes. Your life. So God, we thank you for this word. God, we ask that you would confirm it and seal it. Lord, and we, we submit our flesh to you, God. Lord, and we, we, we want to stand in your righteousness, God. We want to walk forward in your righteousness, in your way, in your word, in your will. And God, we ask that your kingdom come, your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, and we believe that the glory of God is getting ready to overflow and yes. overflow in this season to come. And your people want to be ready. We are committing that we will be ready and consecrated before you so that you rise to the top in our life. And everything that is devil and dark has to go so that the world will know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Come on, light. Y'all rise up. Rise up like a city on the hill that cannot be hidden. And we thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead and clap your hands. Yeah. Yeah.
Come on. Leadership looks good on you. God is about to do a role reversal in your life. And everybody's been taken for granted and overlooked and overshadowed. God's about to place value on you. God's about to put his anointing on you. And people ain't going to take you for granted forever. They might be taking you for granted for now. But God ain't finished with you yet. God! Make fun of me while you can. Talk about me while you can. But God is about to make me the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. The lender and not the borrower. Shout yes! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm on some spiritual high, so y'all just got to be patient with me. Glory to God. I've been dr dr drinking Jesus Red Bull. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's why I've been posting all this stuff on Facebook and all kind of books. Because I'm on this whole nother level. Y'all better come on and get with me. I ain't yeah. on nothing now. Yeah. I'm out there now. Y'all ready? Yeah. We can release our kids and may the Lord be with all of y'all. And all y'all adults that's going to stay with me, get ready for God to move yeah. in your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're, we're going to release the kids and then Christy, give me Genesis 3 real quick. I'm going to read like three scriptures. We're going to be preaching about the fire of God. We're going to be preaching about Moses. Are y'all ready? Say amen, somebody. Amen. Y'all better come on with me. I'm ready today. Glory to God. I feel you, God. I feel you, God. This ain't going to be no dead church. I said this ain't going to be no Amen. dead church. Amen. I said this ain't going to be no dead church. I said this ain't going to be no dead church. If God's a part of it, it's going to be alive. If God's a part of your marriage, it should be alive. Yeah. If God is a part of your finances, it should be alive. Yeah, yeah. And I refuse to be dead. I refuse to be sad. I refuse to be lonely. I refuse to be stale. I refuse to be sleepy. What's sleep got to do with anything? I'm going to walk in the anointing that God has placed on my life. Yeah. Come on, y'all better help me preach today. Hallelujah. I ain't going to let the church just get stale. Come on. The devil is alive. I walk in the spirit of God and I can change the atmosphere. You can change the atmosphere if you want to. You don't got to agree with the atmosphere. You don't got to agree with the surroundings. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. You are the light in a dark place. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. Yeah. Can we bless God for Jesus always on the camera, always being overlooked, always being passed by, always being forsaken, always being taken for granted. Yeah. But I want you to know yeah. God ain't passing yeah. you by, God ain't taking you for granted, yeah. and God's watching you behind that camera. And before it's over, God! Yes. Y'all ain't me somebody. Yes. I promise I that by the time by this time next year, Come you're gonna be walking in supernatural doors. Yes. I promise out every yes. closed door in your life. Yes. I command it to open right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Hey, yes. Come on, y'all better learn yes. to celebrate each other. Yes. I celebrate y'all that are here today. Thank yes. you, Jesus. I'm ready. Noah, my son, I prophesy that you're yes. going to be used by God this time next year. Yes, amen. It's still and sad right now, but by this time next year, you're going to be walking in a whole realm of glory. Somebody yes. say amen. 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 Genesis chapter 3. Are y'all ready? I promise I won't be before you long, but I feel churchy down yeah. in my sanctified soul. Glory to God. I've been drinking some kind of Jesus juice. I don't know what kind of spinach I'm on right now, but I don't want it to leave. Me. Amen. Genesis 3, I'm going to read about two or three verses, maybe four. I'm going to be talking about when God called Moses into leadership. Mm. Hallelujah. And how he experienced the fire of God in his old age. It's never too late with God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Some of y'all, you think you've missed your moment and you've missed your destiny and you've messed up your life and you ain't messed nothing up. Come on. God knew the relationship was going to fail before it ever started. Come on. He knew that people was going to walk out on you the moment the relationship started. Right. It's just something you had to go through so he could break you to prepare you for it. He blesses you. Yes. Hallelujah. So that when you get there, you remain humble. Don't need a title. Don't need a badge. And don't need to feel important. That's it. I'm a human. That's it. I'm crazy like you. I know me. Are y'all ready? Yes. Okay. I think it's verse, let's see. Genesis 3. Is this it? Now the servant was, no, that ain't it. That ain't it. Exodus 3. 
Exodus 3. I'm sorry, y'all. I know the word. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it's Exodus 3 where God calls him. Um, y'all, y'all, y'all stay with me. I told you I'm kind of on spiritual high. Now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. So he watching sheep. So he called to lead the whole world, and he's on the backside of the desert watching sheep. Yes. Mm, my God. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, here I am. He said, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals for the place where you stand is holy. And then if you keep reading, you, you'll see where God says, I'm, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to tell my people to let them go. I'm going to skip down for sake of time. Verse 10, he says, so now go. Look at this. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people the Israelites out of Egypt. Come on. Look at look at his response to God, a burning bush. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Mm. Now I, I want to use the subject to be nice and polite. You haven't missed your moment. That's the nice and polite title, Xavier. You haven't missed your moment. But the real title I want to use is Don't Stay Stuck and Stupid. Come on. That's the real title I want to use, but I know we can't post that on Facebook, or maybe we can edit the post. I don't know. <laughs> it's all right. I, I guess that's the real title I want to say is Don't Stay Stuck and Stupid, because it's time for you to move into the position that God has for you. It's time for you to walk in your purpose. Yes. It's time for you to walk in your destiny. It's time for you to walk in your leadership role. It's time for you to walk in your supervisor role. Yes. It's time for you to walk in your headship role. Yes. It's time for you to walk in your house ownership role. Yes. I prophesy to somebody, I don't know if it's in this room or if it's online, but somebody's going to be the first millionaire in their family. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank yes. you, Jesus. I just speak it in existence. Somebody's going to be the first entrepreneur in their family. Yes. The first house owner and if it ain't for none of y'all maybe for somebody watching in California yeah. Yeah. but I prophesy that God is about to take you to a leadership role in Jesus name somebody say don't get stuck and stupid don't get stuck and stupid God help me preach because you I'm going to go ahead and be honest and transparent and let everybody know I cannot do it without you yes. I don't want to do it without you have your way in this little church, God. We don't take it lightly. We don't take it for granted. We invite your presence in here right now. God, I feel your glory. I feel you're going to move in this place in a mighty way, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can I preach for a few minutes? Can y'all help me do this thing? I feel glory up in the middle. Thank you, Lord. I feel it. When God called Moses into leadership, he was 80 years old. Come on. 80 years old. When God called him, he is 80 years old when he has this burning bush experience. Yes. So that means, Jesus, that he spent the first 80 years of his life not having a clue who he was. Come on. He spent the first 80 years of his life not experiencing the power of God. Come on. 80 years of going to church and believing in God and not experiencing nothing. You can be called by God to do great things and not feel anything. Amen. You can be called by God to do great things and feel average and feel normal and be taken for granted. Come on. But I came to prophesy to every person in here that's been taken for granted. Yes. They don't take you for granted right now because they will not always yeah. take you for granted. Yeah. 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 I'm going yeah. to preach to myself right now. Yeah. You, you, they taking you for granted for right now, but they ain't going to take you for granted forever. Yeah. Because God ain't finished with you yet. Yes. And the Bible said, he who began a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. So I prophesy to every person, you will not be taken for granted forever. Yes. He spent the first 80 years of his life feeling average and feeling normal. Yes. If you want to kill a man, if you want to kill a ministry, if you want to kill a marriage, just treat it average and normal. Right. If you want to kill any ministry, if you want to kill any option, just take them average 
marriage and take them for granted and take them uh, for, for normality. Right. Because don't nothing get on a man's nerve. Don't nothing get on a leader's nerve Come on. like normalcy. Come on. If you want to get on my ever-loving nerve, just be average and just be anointed. Right. I mean, just be average and just be normal. But Moses spent the first 80 years of his life feeling average and normal. This is why if you're going to follow the voice of God in your life, you cannot be following God based on how you feel. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. I preach this day. Amen. If you're going to follow the voice of God and do all he has called you to do, you cannot base your leadership and, and your lifestyle and what he's called you to based on how you feel. Come on. If you're really going to follow the voice of God and walk into the realm that he wants you to walk in, often you got to do the opposite of how you feel. Yes. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Yes. Jesus didn't want to die on the cross, but he did it anyways. Yes. I didn't want to go to work all these extra hours I'm working right Come now, on. but it has nothing to do with my feelings. Nope. There is an assignment on my life to break poverty off yeah. me. Yeah. There is an assignment on my life to break spiritual demons of yeah. poverty and, and debt cancellation off me. I didn't want to go to work and work all these two and three and four jobs that I'm working right now, right. but it has nothing to do with how I feel right now. There is an assignment on my life to break generational curses. Yes. If you don't follow the voice of God and the will of God for your life. You can't be led by your feelings and by your emotions. Amen. You ain't gonna feel it all the time. If y'all noticed, this week I posted about everybody that had back pain. I prophesied and told them your back was being healed in the yes. name of Jesus. The reason I spoke and said your back is about to be healed is because I was struggling that day with severe back pain. Mm. So I told the devil, if you don't mess with my back, Come I'm going to prophesy over everybody's back yes. and command him. Yeah. Yeah. And the next day, my neck was hurting. So I got on Facebook again, and I prophesied to everybody, and I said, yeah. if your neck is hurting, I command it now in the name of Jesus to stop hurting. If you're going to walk in the favor and in the realm of yeah. glory that God has yeah. for you, yeah. you got to do the opposite of how you feel. Yeah. You can't be waiting on your feelings and waiting on your emotions to follow the will of God. Yeah. you got to do the opposite. Yeah. 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 Jesus didn't want to die on the cross, but he did it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Moses did not believe in his calling. He did not believe in his destiny, but he was obedient to the voice of God, even yeah. though he didn't agree with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. He yeah. was, oh, God, watch this. God doesn't need you to agree with him. Right. He just needs you to be obedient yeah. to what he's telling you to do. Yeah, right. If you will be obedient to him, a moment of obedience is will outwork a lifetime of sacrifice Come and on. suffering. Come for on. the Bible says obedience is greater than sacrifice. Yes. God doesn't need you to understand him. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like yeah. 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 God doesn't need you to comprehend him. He needs you to be obedient. Yeah. And if you will be obedient to him, you will open, he will open up supernatural opportunities for you, supernatural doors. I came to prophesy that even though you don't feel it, even though you don't understand it, you get ready to walk in obedience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I speak to every closed door. Yeah. It's going to open from your obedience to the voice of God. Yeah. You ain't going to feel it. You ain't going to want to do it. But you're going to do it anyways. Yeah. You're going to be obedient to the voice of God anyways. Yeah. And supernatural doors are about to open in your life. Yeah. If that's your word and you agree with that, Come on. and you're getting ready to walk in the obedience of God, open up your mouth and holler at your voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Too often we agree with our feelings and uh, agree with our emotions and agree with uh, how we feel every day. Right. That's why one day you posted about Jesus and miracles and how amazing your God is. Right. And God is amazing. And God is awesome. And God can do all things and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But because we're led by our feelings, the next day we're posting on Facebook how sick we are. Right. How sad we are. Right. How lonely we are. How depressed we are. How you going to post one day about how good your God is. And then you going to post about how sick you are the next. Right. It's time for you to be stop being led by your emotions yeah. and stop being led by your feelings. Yeah. One day 
you up and the next day you're down. Yeah. One day you're talking about how good God is and how he loves everybody, and the next day you hate on everybody. Right. I came to break that emotional yeah. spirit off your mind. You're going to be steadfast and unmovable. Yeah. You're going to be consistent. You're going to be dependable. You're going to be reliable. You ain't going to be walking in love at church and you're walking in hate at home. Right. I break that spirit of emotionalism off your mind. Yes. I break it off you right now in the name of Jesus. You ain't gonna be posting one day that God can do miracles, and the next day you sick and you got forty five pillows on the bed around you. Come on. I break that spirit off you right now in the name of Jesus. You ain't gonna post about miracles on Monday and then Tuesday you at home sick with forty five pillows all around your neck and your body and your toe. If your house caught on fire, you couldn't even escape because you got so many pillars around you. Right. I'm breaking off you right now in the name of Jesus. You get ready to be a leader. You get ready to walk in the faith realm. Stop walking in the natural realm and start looking at yourself through the spiritual eyes of Jesus Christ. You operate in the natural. It's time to walk in the spirit realm. Shout at me somebody. Quit being so emotional and and this limp wristed jelly back Christian and be strong for the Lord. I came to prophesy to you this is your year to be tough. This is your year to yeah. have drive. Yeah, this yeah. is your year to have discipline. This is your year to be who God's called you to be. Amen. Quit being so emotional, led by your feelings. Quit it. Stop it. Be who God's called you to be. Well, I'm just going to get on Facebook Live and do a post. And then I'm just going to wait and see if somebody's going to get on here and like my video. Right, right. Don't nobody want to see your sick self, you <laughs> sad one day and up the next. Don't nobody want to see you sad and lonely and depressed. If you're going to get on Facebook, then get on there and prophesy. Yeah. Get on there and declare God is good. Get on there and declare God is able. Don't nobody want to see you sick and sad and tired and lonely. I believe some people are making an effort to be sick. They want to be sick. Right. Looking for a reason to be sick. Looking for a reason to be sad. Looking for a reason to be depressed. Yeah. Looking for a reason to be lonely. Yeah. No boyfriend broke up with you five years ago and you still crying over that. Right. And you a man of God. Get over that stuff. Right. God got something great in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Some people want to die. Just want to die. Just get sick over anything. Get sad over anything. Get depressed over. I believe you want to die. Right. If you're going to die, go ahead and die and get out the way and let me get your life insurance. I got stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of stuff for my own spiritual. I'll tell you what I'm right now. Thank you, Jesus. Life insurance. You're saying, well, what are you saying, Pastor? I can't be sick. I ain't saying you can't be sick. I'm saying don't let the sickness have you. Yeah, don't let the it. sickness control you. Yeah, yeah. Don't let the disease control you. I ain't saying you can't be sick. I'm saying don't let the sickness have you. Right. The Bible says greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. There's no sickness in your body that's stronger than the power of Jesus Christ. Come on. There's no pain in your past that's stronger than the purpose that God has placed over your yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Oh, I feel, I feel glow in here. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead also lives in you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I break the spirit of emotionalism yeah. off your mind yeah. right now in the name of Jesus. You're going to be steadfast. You're going to be unmovable. You're going to be consistent. You're going to be dependable. If this is your word, open up your mouth and shout it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Moses' point one is he had to be obedient to the voice of God, even though he didn't agree with the voice of God. This is your year to stop agreeing with how you feel, stop agreeing with how your circumstances look, and start operating in the spirit realm. Stop walking by faith and not by sight. Start speaking over your marriage and say, we will be blessed, we will be healed. Stop, start speaking over your ministry and telling the chairs, get ready for action yeah. because somebody's about to sit on you. You are about to do your job. Y'all yeah. got to start operating in the spirit realm and quit looking at yourself in the natural realm. 
you're looking at your flesh for confirmation and you can't look at your flesh for confirmation. The Bible says to walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. What God's calling you to do ain't going to make any sense. These chairs sitting here don't make any sense. But I promise out to you chair by yeah. this time next year, you yeah. will be full. You will be at capacity. You will do all God's called you to do. You got to speak to your marriage. You got to speak to your kids. You got to speak to your ministry. You got to speak to your wife. You got to speak to your business. You got to believe God for the supernatural. You got to believe God for the miraculous. You got to believe God for the impossible. I came to prophesy to you today, and God is about to take you to a new realm of glory, yeah. a new realm of faith. From this day forward, you ain't going to be sad and sick and lonely and depressed another day in your life talking about what I can't do, what I need to stop, where I need to go. No, you need to be obedient to the voice of God yeah. because the favor of God is on your life. Yeah. And if you will take a step forward into that thing, you will discover the strength of God is on you. For the Bible says, my strength shall be made perfect in your weakness. And if you will walk into your weakness, you will discover the strength of God. If you will walk into the thing you struggle at, you will discover yeah. the strength of God. Somebody praise him for his strength. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You get ready to tap into the supernatural realm. Holy Ghost strength. Spiritual warfare. I ain't staying stuck for nobody. God died so I could be free. Shout yeah. Yes. Shout yeah. Average and normal because average people do what? Average things. <laughs> Come on. The enemy wants to normalize you and make you feel average because average people do average things. Like show up for work late, never go the extra mile, we do everything average. When we get to church and we do worship, guess what? It's just average. average. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. I'm thinking if I got to go to heaven with you and go <laughs> still, I don't want to go there. Right, Let right. me go with a chair. A chair makes more noise than you. <laughs> a chair moves more than you. The Bible said if you ain't going to cry out, the rocks will. I yeah. ain't got time to be stale and be sad and be depressed. Another day in my life. I'm 42. I'm sick of having the blues. Right. I'm ready to be blessed. I'm ready to be whole. I'm ready to be free. I'm ready to be healed. Somebody say amen. Amen. Yeah. The enemy wants you to feel normal so you're, you're just average and you just go through the motions. But the Bible says if someone asks you to walk one mile, it says walk two miles with them. Yeah. Ooh, that's good preaching right Yeah, now. yeah. I came to tell you there's another mile in you. Come on. There's more in you. There's more strength in you. You can work two jobs and get out of debt if you give yourself a chance. You can work the job at McDonald's if you would just give yourself a chance to do it. You ain't got to like it. Just bust a move and do it. Yeah. Amen, yeah. somebody. Amen. Amen. So the next thing I want to look at is he was watching sheep when he had his conversation with God. But he had to go to his father-in-law, Jethro, and tell him, I can't watch these sheep no more. Yeah. I came to tell you that what God is about to do in your life is so big that the old schedule you're working on and walking on ain't going to work for this new season of your life. If you're going to walk into the favor of God, you got to have the courage to change your schedule. you got to have the courage to rearrange some stuff. You can't get stuck on stupid and doing what you used to do and expect God to do something great and new in your life. Yeah, amen. Oh, I'm preaching good up here, yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah. Person on faith, but I'm preaching the hell out of this man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I command every devil, you got to go now in the name of Jesus. If you can walk in your calling, you got to have the courage to leave your comfort zone behind. Yeah. Moses went to Jephro and he said, I can't watch these shit no more. I got a calling on my life. Yeah. Amen. You got to have the courage to get out your comfort zone. Yeah. yeah. You can't ask God to make you debt free and you ain't willing to work two jobs. Come on. You can't ask God to make you debt free and you ain't willing to.
to work on Saturday and Sunday after church. Yep. Come on, let's Amen. be real. It took God six days to build the earth, and you won't do nothing outside of your normal schedule. If you can walk into the realm of glory, you got to change your schedule, change your sheep schedule, yeah. get out your comfort zone, and go out to the calling that is on your life. Yeah. There's a calling on your life, yes. but it ain't going to be comfortable, and it ain't going to be easy. Come on. Come on. Get out your comfort zone. He left the sheep go. You got to get out your comfort zone this year. You praying for God to give you a man and send you this amazing man of God. And when you go to Walmart, you still got on house shoes. On. Still got on pajamas. Right. Amen. Amen. Talking about I need God to send me a man of God. And then when you go to Walmart, you look just like you got out of bed. Right. And then you go into Walmart on aisle six shopping for jelly beans. <laughs> and then your husband is on aisle seven <laughs> Come on. getting broccoli and cabbage. Right. He's ready, but you're not. Right. And that's why he ain't going to see you because you're ugly. You ain't even ready for your opportunity. <laughs> you lazy. But I break that spirit off you right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Your boss yeah. might be at Walmart, but you got to be presentable. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says be ready in season and out of season. Yeah. You got to dress like you made your man at McDonald's. You got to carry. Come on. <laughs> Preaching. Uh, Y'all don't want me to preach preaching. Today, but I'm preaching this thing right preaching. now. You up in Walmart with some house shoes on, talking about God send me my man, and and I need an opportunity. The manager at Walmart might come hire on. you if you wouldn't come up in there with pajamas on. Come on. I don't want to see your behind. I want to see your boldness. I want to yeah. see your discipline. I want to see your drive. I want to see your determination. I want to see that you're hungry for God. Yeah. I want to see that you want to see a move for God. Yeah. This is your year to get out your comfort zone. Yeah. Kick the door down and rearrange yeah. your schedule. Rearrange your life. You want my blessings and get on my schedule. You want the favor I got then get on my schedule. Work on Saturday and then preach on Sunday. And then after that, go clean the house. You got to bust a move if you're going to be all God's called yeah. you to be. Leave them sheep behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, I need you to be, I need you to make me debt free. I need to be debt free, Lord. I need you to free me up. Then work that thing. The Bible said faith without works is dead. Yeah. If you will work that thing, God will show, he'll show your special ed self supernatural favor. Yeah. I'm a special ed dyslexia, no reading, no writing, learning person, and God's opened up the window to heaven. I can't yeah. read like you, I can't spell like you, but I, I work you in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Try me if you want to. Amen. Try me if you want to. You got to identify your gift and work that thing. Yeah. Work Walmart. Work Kroger. Work it until God opens the door. God will take your two fish and five loaves of bread and spread it and make it to. Amen. Your life ain't going to make no sense. So stop trying to figure it out. Stop trying to calculate it and do the thing God called you to do. If he told you to clean toilets, then clean toilets. Yeah. If he told you to put makeup on somebody's face, then put makeup on their face. Yeah. Because God will make you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. And you can't figure out your God, so stop trying to do it and be obedient and leave them sheep behind yeah. and get out your comfort zone and let God bless Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody give him 10 seconds. Yeah. Just leave the halfway point. Yeah, yeah. Somebody shout, get ready. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. Yeah. It's about to happen in your life. Shout, yes. Yes. Somebody get ready to work two jobs. Night classes, double shifts. I got to break every stronghold. I got to get out of my comfort zone. I got to be everything God's called me to be. I can't afford to get to my grave and God show me what I could have been while I was alive. I got to walk in my destiny now. I got to walk in my purpose now. I got to walk in my calling now. If that's your word, open up your mouth and give it 30 seconds of courage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We good. I feel something, Drew. You feel that thing? I feel something yeah. about to.
the shift in here. Slap your neighbor high five and say, change your schedule. Change your schedule. Your old work schedule ain't gonna work for this new season. God's getting ready to turn your life around. I prophesy out of you now supernatural favor. By this time next year, ain't nobody gonna recognize you. Ain't nobody gonna understand you. And ain't nobody gonna take you for granted another day in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. having church in here. You're saying, well, pastor, I don't feel no drive anymore. And I don't feel no passion anymore. And I don't feel no discipline anymore. You want me to tell you what's wrong with you? You haven't allowed God to uh, open up your heart and heal you. Yeah. Moses didn't want to do it because he was still hurting from his past. He was still hurt from the last time he tried to lead and it didn't work. Right. You want me to tell you why you ain't got no passion? You ain't healed yet. You ain't opened up your heart and allowed God to heal your broken areas in your life. Amen. Because when you open up your heart and you allow God to heal your pain and heal your hurt and heal your diseases, you get passion for people again. Yeah, yeah. You get passion for your calling again. Yeah. You get passion for your church again. But the reason you ain't got no passion is you're operating off of pain. But I came to prophesy to you today that God is about to heal your broken heart. He's about to heal your stony heart. And everything that's been hard in your life is about to get soft for the glory of God. I feel the anointing of God all on me today. Yeah. God's about to give you passion again. You ain't got no passions because you ain't been healed yet. But you're getting ready to open up your heart and allow God to yeah. heal you. Yeah, yeah. Last night when I went in the Dollar General like 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, I saw the cashier and I had passion for it. And I normally don't have passion for it. Can I be honest? Yeah, yeah. Because everybody that's in my life, a lot of people like to take advantage of me. Right. And Doug do this and Doug do that. So it's hard for me to have passion for people because people don't really want me. They want my stuff. Right, right, right. But God's been healing my heart lately. Yeah. And I saw the cashier and he was a young boy. And I said, God bless you. You do an amazing job. If you will allow God to heal the broken pain and the broken areas of your life, you will get your passion for God back again. You'll get your passion for people back again. You saying when Pastor Doug got healed, I let God heal me three years ago. You ain't healed yet. Right. That's why you're still looking at Facebook at your ex. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, I'm preaching good up yeah, in here. Amen. If you healed and delivered, why in the world are you still looking at your past? Mm. Amen. Talking about God's healed me. And you still looking at your last ministry and your last church and how big their church is. And how skinny your ex is. Let me tell you something. The enemy will always stun on you with other people's success. Yeah. Everybody knew Pharaoh was the strongest leader at that time. Yep. The enemy will always show you what you need to see to discourage you. Come on. Every time. You had a kid 15 years ago, and you still got back rolls on you from Johnny. Your ex had a kid a year ago, and already skinny, in a bathing suit, and you scrolling on there looking at her. Right. Oh, Come on. Amen. You looking at your ex and you allowing the devil to torment you. Yeah. She in a bathing suit on the beach and you looking and scrolling and sinking in to see if it's real. It's real, baby. Just get over it. Right. It's real. Just get over it. She's eating cabbage and kale and feeding her kids right and you feeding your kids chicken nuggets and french fries. The enemy will always show you somebody else's success. Yeah. So stop tormenting yourself and forgive yourself and move on. Right. The Bible says your latter days shall be greater than your former days. Yeah. Your future is better than your past. Yeah. And if they was meant to be in your future, they would be in your life right now. But the fact that they ain't in your life right now is a sign they weren't meant to be in your future. Amen. So quit crying over what you lost because God's got something great ahead of you. What is in front of you is way greater than behind you. Amen. 
Oh, I feel that thing right now. Some of y'all get ready to block some posts, delete some messages, delete some friends. I ain't tormenting myself another day in my life. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind me, I press forward to the mark. Some of y'all need to let God give y'all spiritual amnesia. Yeah, yeah. You still remember your ex's birthday. You get sadder on your ex's birthday more than you do celebrating your own birthday. Come on. How in the world you don't know your ex's date? The day she was born. I don't know nothing about my ex. I don't know if you dyed your hair. I don't know if it's pink, purple, or red. Right. I don't know if you're married or divorced. I don't know nothing about you. You know why? You don't belong to me. Everybody ain't your assignment. Yeah. Everybody ain't your calling. You got to have the courage to let some people go. There ain't no woman's name being mentioned in my bed but Christian Templeton. And if it, your name ain't Christian, you a woman, you ain't getting talked about in my bed. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I yeah. should let your pastor. Let's go. You need to let God give you spiritual amnesia because if you will allow God to heal you from your past and heal you from your broken heart, you'll get passion for what God's doing in your life right now. You'll get passion for your marriage right now. You'll get passion for your ministry right now. You was hurt at your last church so you don't want to do nothing here. You need to open up your heart and allow God to heal you so you can help us with this church. I'm struggling, brother, struggling. Yeah. You need to help and it means something, something. But you done got a stony heart. But I break it off you right now yeah. in the name of Jesus. And I prophesy to you that yeah, you yeah. will be healed. Yeah. God's about to give you passion for the people again. Passion for the body again. Passion for your spouse again. You're about to get spiritual amnesia. And you ain't going to remember nothing from your past. Not a woman, not a man. I don't care how fine they was. I don't care how sexy they was. God is about to erase your memory. You're going to get spiritual amnesia because what's in front of you is so powerful and so great and so holy and so anointed. You ain't going to remember nothing. Yeah. Yes. Somebody shout, I'm healed. I'm healed. Somebody shout, I'm free. Somebody shout, I'm delivered. I'm delivered. Give God a praise for it right now. Yeah. I said, give God a praise for it right now. I said, give God a praise for it right now. I said, give God a praise for it right now. I said, give God a praise, give God a praise, give God a praise. Give God a praise, give God a praise. Yeah. Yeah. In order for Moses, point three, for him to walk in his purpose, he had to overcome the pain of his past. And some of y'all need to quit letting your past torment you. Yes. You letting your past tell you what to do. People that was in your life five years ago ain't doing squat for God. Come on. Telling you what to do. Come on. Ain't got a dime and telling you how to run your business. Come on. <laughs> Won't even work a job and going to tell you how to run your life and how to run your business. Right. Can I remind you God called you to do it and not them? God called you to oversee the million, not them. They ain't never made over $250 a week. And now they want to call you and tell you how to manage your million dollars. Right. Shut your mouth. God called you to do it. Quit letting people speak in your life that ain't supposed to speak to you. You friends with the wrong people. Yeah. You let the wrong people mentor you. God called you to do it. I prophesy from this day forward, yeah. you will not be easily influenced yeah. by the wrong people. Yes. You will not be influenced by the people of your past. Old circles and stale dead circles that ain't even supposed to be in your life anymore. Yeah. I came to prophesy to you right now. You will no longer focus on the pain of your past as much as you will the power of your purpose. Yes. Amen. I prophesy to somebody today. Yes. Some of us know more about the pain from our past yeah. than we do the, the pain of our past than we are the calling on our life. But I break that spirit off of you right now. If you're going to be committed to anything, you're going to be committed to God. Yeah. And what he's doing right now. Yes. You say, I'll die for my husband and I'll die for my kids. How about living for them? Right. That's it. That's it. If you will die for me, why don't you bust a move and live for me? Yeah. Go ahead and maximize what God is doing in your life right now. I am not waiting on my wife to leave me before I get fired. Come on. I'm going to be fine right now. Yeah. I'm going to be looking good right now. I'm going to be in the 
gym right now. If you would die for your kids, why in the world won't you live for them kids? Yeah. Why won't you work a double shift for them kids? Why won't you bust open the door for them kids? Why won't you break a generational curse for them kids? Yeah. I ain't worried about y'all liking me. I'm preaching this thing to myself. Yeah. I ain't staying stuck for nobody yeah. another day in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. If I'm going to die, I'm going to live. Christ said he died so that we could come and have life and have life more abundant. I ain't waiting on you to leave me so you can stun on me with another man. Right. If you leave me, you're going to regret right. it because yeah. I'm going to be the baddest person God yeah. made me to be. I'm going to do all he called me to do. I'm going to have all he called me to have. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't get me twisted today. I'm gangster now. Hallelujah. Y'all have messed with me too many times. Thank you, Jesus. I'm on a whole other level now, so y'all can forget it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. People will restrict you from your past. So you got to quit letting people's perception of you put a price tag on you. Come on. Ooh, Jesus. You don't identify my value no more. There is a calling on my life. Yes, I did some dumb stuff. Yes, I made some bad decisions. Yes, it didn't make any sense. Yes, I messed up. But the grace of God is still on my life. Yes. Yeah. Don't get stuck and stupid. Did I mess up? Yes. Did I quit the job? Yes. Did I quit the ministry? Yes. But I didn't run out of the grace of God. Come on. And I came to tell you that the grace of God is still on you. The favor of God is still on you. Greatness is still inside of you. And God ain't finished with you yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said God ain't finished with you yet. I said God ain't finished with you yet. If God can take a garbage truck boy with a learning disability from Elrod, Alabama and use me to do what I'm doing, God can still use you. Yes, amen. I said, God can still use you. I said, God can still use you. Stop letting people put a price tag on you. Stop letting people restrict you according to your path. Hey, so I'll say this and I'm going to let y'all go. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a spiritual junkie right now. I've been eating cabbage with Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I speak to this church by this time next year, we will be at capacity. Yeah. I prophesy now. Jesus. I break every naysayer and every curse sayer yeah. off of us now. Yeah. Every generational curse, I break it off your mind. Every spirit of low self-esteem, I break it off your mind. Yeah. The form of depression, I break it off your mind. Feeling inadequate, insecure, I break it off your mind now in the name yes. of Jesus. Amen. So now, when pastors call me, because you know I've been in the woodworking business for 10 years now. When they call me, Drew, it's never to preach. Never to preach. I never have pastors call me to preach, Jesus. They always call me and say, Doug, I need you to build me a podium. I need you to build me a stage. I need you to build this platform to hang my stuff. My I'm, I'm serious. I can show y'all emails right now. Don't Nobody never called me to preach. Because people will restrict you based on where you've been. Right. And not where God is taking you. Right. So it's always when they call me, I'm a pastor. It's never to preach. It's always to come do woodwork. Come on. But I came to tell you, man and woman of God, you ain't going to be taken for granted yeah. forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep doing the thing that God's called you to do. Even when it don't make any sense, even when you don't get the results you want, everybody ain't going to see the greatness that's inside of you. Amen. People will restrict you based on where you've been. Nobody can see me as a pastor because all they can see me is a, a, a woodworker. I came to prophesy to you today and tell you there's more in you. Yes. There's more in you. 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 Yeah, yeah. There's more in you. There's more in you. There's more in you. God don't want you to spend the rest of your life sad, sick, and depressed watching sheep when you're called to change a nation, when you're called to change the world, when you're called to change generational curses on your family. There's more in you. I promise out of you now in the name of Jesus Christ, you will be great. 
You will be special. You will be called by God. You will be obedient to his voice. You will give up your comfort zone. You will develop spiritual amnesia and forget your past. Yes. You will walk in your purpose. I speak to you, daughter. I speak to you, son. I speak to you, husband. I speak to you, wife. And I call the greatness out of you. No more dormancy. No more watching sheep. No more watching life pass you by. Well, there's an assignment on your life from God himself. Hallelujah. I prophesy to every soul in this room that has been taken for granted for years. You will not be taken for granted for the rest of your life. Watch your God. Watch your God. They showing up late for you now, but God ain't finished for you yet. Amen. Amen. They taking you for granted now, but wait a minute. Yes. When you the first millionaire, listen. <laughs> yeah. Watch God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch God. Watch the favor of God rewrite your story. Watch God rewrite this chapter in your life. Watch it. I prophesy to you now that God's got a plotted scheme in your story. Yeah. God's about to turn everything around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this next chapter is going to be a hidden scheme. Yeah. Nobody saw it coming. When they was reading your story, it ended up you being a failure. Come on. But God's got a sneaky plan that is about to put in your life. And everybody's going to say, hey, Susan, did that? Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. yes. And Xavier up there worshiping God. Yes. Wait a minute, I thought he was a rapper for Gucci Man. <laughs> God gonna turn your story around. Yeah. Yeah. I call you out of your sheep season. Yes. In front of you. There's more inside of you. You haven't seen your best day yet. The power of God rests upon your life. You can do more than you think you can do. You can do more than you think you can do. So. I'm sorry, y'all. I know we got to go, but I feel glory in the building. I feel stony hearts being restored. I feel God renewing somebody's mind. Somebody had lost hope, given up on their marriage, given up on their kids, and God's opening up your heart and doing surgery and rewriting your story. This last chapter is going to be the best chapter. Yeah. The first 10 was boring, but God snuck up on the last chapter, and he's about to interrupt your life. Come on. Jonah ran from God, but God sent him a backup plan, and he sent him some transportation to bring him back yeah. to God. <laughs> God's got some transportation already set up for you. Ride your fish into your destiny. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Yes, Lord. God, I thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. God, heal me from my broken past. Heal me from the places I, I've been harboring pain and I've been holding on to failure and I've been holding on to insecurities and I've been holding on to that skinny girl. I'm sick of that skinny girl. I let her go. She can eat the cabbage and kale. Yeah. I'm going to be free this day. I'm going to be all God's called me to be. I'm not going to compare myself to nobody another day in my life. Father, I repent yes. from comparing myself to people. Yeah. I repent from comparing myself and trying to be something I'm not. I'm going to be all you called me to be. I'm going to wear my size 10 jeans the best they ever wore. I'm going to look so good in my size 10 jeans, you're going to think I'm skinny. <laughs> Come on. Work your life. Work your life. Everybody ain't going to be skinny. Come on. Work you. Yes. Work you. You beat yourself up over skinny, and both her parents are skinny, and both girls is thick. Right. Do the math. Right. Stop it. Be confident in who God made you to be. Yes. If you're confident in yourself, you can fool people. They'll think you fine. 
I didn't even know you was looking that good. You got to believe in yourself. Yeah. God made you. Yeah. God made you look the way you look for a reason. Now rock that thing. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Rock that thing. Yes. I ain't let no man look better to, to Christian than me. I'm going to look the baddest I can be. I'm my brother doing all I can. 42 looking all right. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's go. What's up? Let's move. Let's go. Y'all ready? Take over the world. Be all God's called you to be. Be bold. Be tenacious. Get rid of that sheep season in your life. It's over. The sheep season is over. Get out your comfort zone. Let God use you. You ain't got to like it. Just do it anyways. You ain't got to like it. Just do it anyways. When I get on Facebook doing my little videos, I'm stirring and spitting it. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to start until I figure out how to say it right. Come on. I'm going to get on there and say, God, God's about to bless you. Make fun of me all you want. I ain't staying stuck and stupid. Come on. I'm going to make fun of me if you want to. If you're going to be taken serious, you got to have the courage to be taken for granted at first. Yo, oh, that's good. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Make fun of me while you can. Because God ain't finished with my life. And when you see me rolling on doves, don't hate on me. If Come you're on. God in my life, then spin it. I will put spinning rims all over your face. <laughs> when it's so dark, you need a flashlight to see me. I'm going to celebrate myself. I ain't crying over my ex's birthday no more. I'm going to celebrate my birthday and my life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody getting free from depression. Yeah. And low self-esteem and hating on yourself and knowing your ex's birthday is over. Right. Celebrate your birthday. Yeah. Take yourself out. Drink some hot cocoa with Jesus. Yeah. Woo! You know what you need to do today? Go celebrate yourself. Post it on Facebook. Y'all think I've no way to tonight. I'm getting on Facebook. Come on. Watch and see. Same clothes, same shirt, same yeah, hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about the blood to bless you. <laughs> Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Everything I put on Facebook ain't even spelled right. Ain't got no commas, ain't got no periods. And you see it, and I do too. You got to be in the spirit realm if you're going to follow my ministry. God don't need commas and explanation marks. He needs you to be obedient. Moses stuck when he got to Pharaoh. He said, Pharaoh. Amen. There was a bush. He was on fire. Right. He said, we got to go. God don't need small and sophisticated and educated. Come on. He don't need you to be perfect. He needs you to be obedient. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Amen. Let's go. Go build your building. Go build your church. Go build your ministry. Go be the first millionaire. Yeah. And then buy yourself a Lexus. Come on. Come on. Why? If I'm going to have pearly gates in heaven Come on. and cold streets in heaven, can I have a bag of chips on earth? Come on. All right. I'll let y'all go. I know y'all need to go home. But I'm ready to go. Yes. Have your way, God, in our lives. From Thank this day you, forward, we shall never be the same. In Jesus' mighty name, shout amen. Amen.